we cruise the very last cruise of the actual love boat from the TV show before the ship was sent to the junkyard. It was an unforgettable nightmare. We never missed an episode of the TV show growing up, so we found it really fascinating to be able to cruise on the actual boat from that TV show. Are you old enough to remember these actors from the 70s when they started the Love Boat series that went on for years and years? Then a few years later, they brought in the captain's niece. This is the same crew from when they did their 50th anniversary of the show. Walking in, we thought it was going to be the greatest cruise. It was me, my husband, my niece, and our three kids combined. So we asked for a joining cabin so we can be next door to our kids cabin, but the cruise ship somehow gave us two cabins, two doors away from each other. So there was another cabin in between us. As we were departing, we're on the top deck taking pictures of the Statue of Liberty and the winds were like really strong. It was kind of scary. There was a storm already in effect and we didn't realize it. And we had no idea that we were sailing into a enormous gale nine storm with 40 foot waves coming our way. It was crazy. The dining rooms were empty. Nobody could sit down and eat because if you tried to put a spoon in your mouth, it landed on your forehead. Seriously. <laughs> it was crazy. The boat was rocking so badly and things were like all over the place. And the people who did eat anyway um, ended up having a throw up contest. I think my niece won. She threw up 38 times. Most people gain weight on a cruise, but we actually lost weight. So when the cruise reached the first stop, I believe it was Bermuda, we got off the ship and we're like, thank God, stable ground. We don't have to, you know, be rocking all over the place anymore and we can stop throwing up. But so we're like, well, let's try and make something good happen on this trip. So we walked to the beach. I don't know how many blocks it was. And a sandstorm starts. Sand is slapping at us on our legs. It felt like charts of glass. And we were like, oh my God, we got to get out of here. This, the sandstorm got really bad and we had to rush back to the ship. So either way we were screwed, whether we on the ship or off the ship, there was no normal living. <laughs> and then um, we got back on the ship and couldn't win. So while we were in this nightmare, I was trying to figure out ways to get out. I said, maybe we can have a helicopter pick us up off the ship. And, but there was no way to call out to get help. And so we just had to live this. We didn't know what to do. So this was a cruise we took before the princess cruise. And we had such a great time on the celebrity cruise that we were excited to go on the princess cruise thinking we were going to have a great time again, but whoa, were we wrong? And I don't mean just the storm. So much more happened on that cruise. So next we're hanging out in our cabin and the phone rings. I answer the phone and a woman says, can I speak to your husband? I said, sure. And I handed him the phone. Next thing I know, I look at him and he's got this weird look on his face and he, he's like dumbfounded, like what? And then he just hangs up the phone. I'm like, what was that about? He goes, don't worry about it. But then half hour later, the, another call comes in. This time he answers it and he's got that same freaky look on his face like not knowing what to say or do and then he hangs up again so I didn't know what was going on and I said come on what's going on and finally he told me I didn't want to ruin your cruise but some ladies calling up our cabin and talking really filthy dirty to me and I don't know what to do about it he says I can't shut the phone ringer off because what if the kids need us and they need to reach us so we didn't know what to do so after about four or five more calls we were like what are we supposed to do um, he asked her to stop calling and she wouldn't stop calling and the calls were getting raunchier and raunchier and we couldn't shut the phone off. So 
I went to security and I told them what was going on and they said they couldn't do anything because it's an old ship and there was no caller ID on the ship because of that. And they just left us with no resources to fix the problem. We had went up to the pool. It wasn't so crowded, but we went up to the pool and we had two keys with us. And when it was time to leave, there was only one cabin key and we were wondering where the other one went. So there was no sleeping at night either. The calls were continuing and it was getting kind of scary because we were afraid to go anywhere on the ship because that person knew who we were, but we didn't know that person from any of the 800 people on board. So we had no idea who was stalking us. And we would walk around on the ship and, and anytime someone glanced at us, we'd say, oh my God, maybe it's her, maybe it's her, maybe it's her. And we were just freaking out. It was like making our heads spin. The next night we went to the dining room and we tried to eat even though the ship was still rocking. And um, I said to the waiter, do you mind if I take this steak knife with me? And he said, why? I said, because I went to security and I told them that we have a stalker stalking us and harassing us, but they said there's nothing they can do about it. So we have to protect ourselves. So he said, hold on. And he went to the phone and he called security and he, you know, he, I guess he told them you better do something about this. So security comes down and all of a sudden they're interested in helping now. And I, you know, I told them the calls won't stop. We have no idea who this person is out of 800 people on board. We don't know who is stalking us and it's getting kind of freaky. We're afraid to go anywhere on the ship. So, um, the security said to Doug, uh, tell her to call you tomorrow at nine o'clock in the evening. And we'll try and set up some kind of a phone tap by then we, we'll figure out how to do it. So we went back to our cabin after dinner. He wouldn't let me take the knife obviously, but <laughs> we, uh, she calls again and he says, can you call me tomorrow at nine? And so she says, okay. And then, so now tomorrow comes. So two people from security came to our room the next day for the nine o'clock call that we were anticipating. And the male security officer came into the room so he could be there to witness the call. And then the female officer was in the hallway um, for whatever reason. I guess she was going to get the signal and try and, you know, open the door, the cabin door of whoever. Well, anyway, um, the call comes in nine o'clock on the dot and the pervert starts talking nasty. And um, I don't know exactly how they tapped the call. But next thing you know, uh, you, he says something to the security officer in the hallway. And then next thing you know, you hear her opening the cabin door next to ours. It happened to be the cabin that was in between our cabin and our kid's cabin that the pervert was in. Can you believe that? <laughs> so she opens the door and she finds you wouldn't believe this. It was not a woman. It was a man with a voice changer apparatus on the phone. Unbelievable. I still remember what the pervert looked like. He was, uh, like tall to medium height, slim, and he had, um, eyes that were unforgettable because it was like they had no pupils, just black circles in his eyes. And it kind of looked a little, a little evil, but I remembered looking at him on the elevator when we first got on board the ship, uh, going to our cabin. And I noticed he was staring at my husband then, but I didn't think anything of it. And I, you know, we just went on with our day. So the security people took him and brought him to the security office and they told us, don't worry, he's going to be on lockdown for the rest of the cruise. He was forbidden to leave his cabin and they moved his cabin to the other side of the ship. And I felt bad for the old lady that was traveling with him. She's probably wondering what's going on. 
So the next morning we went to the breakfast buffet and we're putting our food on our tray. And who's next to me? <laughs> the old lady that was traveling with the pervert. I don't know if it was his mother or his grandmother, because he was probably about 30 to 35. Um, and she was probably about 80. I don't know. So she goes to me, how's your toilet running? I go fine. And she goes, oh, they had to move us on the other side of the ship because there was something wrong with our toilet. I said, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but I knew the real reason was that they didn't want to let her know that her son or grandson was a pervert. They didn't want to ruin her vacation. So the security officers asked us if we wanted to press charges against him. And we said, no, we just... Uh, want to maybe a, a security escort off the ship when we get back to New York just to make sure that we don't run into him. When we got back home, I was so angry. I was like, you know, we work so hard all year round. We, we were so looking forward to our week vacation. We saved up and it was like being kidnapped. We were stuck on that ship in a living hell of a storm. I mean, it was a living nightmare. And then on top of that, we had the nauseating pervert to deal with. And now we got to wait another year to get another vacation. This is so unfair. So I emailed Princess Cruises after we got home. And I said, you know, it felt like we were kidnapped into a living nightmare. I said, we can't get that week back in our lives and we can't erase the bad memories but at least you could do is give us our money back. And their answer was no. The crew on the princess cruise knew that there was a storm ahead and they didn't cancel the cruise. We got on board. It was so windy. We knew something was up, but we trusted them and we shouldn't have. So, I recommend that you check the weather report before you go on any cruise so you don't end up being a victim. I mean, there's nothing you can do to screen the passengers, you know, to see if there's any perverts on board, <laughs> but at least you can stop yourself from putting yourself into that trap. And, you know, you got to protect yourself because obviously the cruise ship was only interested in not losing money by canceling the cruise.